Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here. It's wonderful to be with you today, my wonderful wife. Maureen. Maureen. We're just yes. excited again to continue on. This is part three dealing with wealth, becoming a millionaire God's way. Uh, we're not really selling the book, we're selling the program. We'd sure love to have you get the book. Uh, we also have a workbook that goes with it, but that's not what this is about. It's trying to get information to you. That God desires to have people with wealth to build his kingdom. That is absolutely God's plan for you. Amen. And I'd like to just speak it into your heart, show you in the word of God that it is God's plan. So many has been written about anti-prosperity and I don't even know where they get that from because the word prosperity, joy, yes, it, it's joy, peace, it's highly favored, it's health, wealth, which part of that wouldn't you want? That's a All of those are the meanings of shalom, or blessed or Amen. prosperity. Amen. And I believe every Christian, every born again Christian, it's God's plan for your life. And I believe you desire it as well from your heart. So that's what we're trying to get across to you today. We're gonna to look at something that sometimes people have a tendency to shut down to, but if you yeah. just listen to this all the way through and get an understanding, I believe that people do what they understand. They don't always do what they know. Yeah. Because can the I, wisdom of God is connected to understanding what you know. Yes, and can I add this to it? You can do whatever. We're going to be talking about Malachi and the it's wealth. Malachi, it's Malachi, that's what I've heard. Yeah. So <laughs> Jesse DePlan is called it Malachi. Malachi. It's an Italian book. Okay, okay, is it? But anyway, is that uh, what God spoke to our heart and was this year. He said, you're not getting the full benefit of your of your of your giving we, we're tithers and we also give offerings and we're going to be talking about that but god was we also gave it us, all and we've given it all but it was really interesting because because we would get our we'd get our tithe check ready we'd get our offerings ready and we would pray over it and believe god for the, you know, the windows of heaven to be opened, all those. Don't we write mm -hmm. on the check what we're believing for? Yes, $1. and we'd give it, and then we'd forget about it. And, and so what God has shown us is that your tithe is works in the supernatural blessings. It works in the miracles of blessings that come upon you. And so there, it's too much, but it carries the anointing of miracles. And so as we began to meditate on it day and night, because you know the word talks about meditation, biblical meditation, med meditating on the word, the promises, right. is, that, is that then we will make our way prosperous and successful. Well, we have seen miracles beyond miracles happening in our lives uh, in every way. That's right. In our giving. And so we start our day in prayer and we, I have the card that about your wealth, getting the benefit of your wealth and all the different scriptures of, of giving and so that we can meditate on it, we can see it. And you know, biblical meditation is taking the word and shouting it out, m muttering it in your mouth, uh, speaking it out, thinking it, uh, drawing a, a picture in your, inside of you, a dream, a movie, building a movie from it. And uh, we spit are, it up like a cut oh of a cow and shoot again. Oh my goodness, we are seeing the meditation on the script. Of God. But what it's tied to is, and I will do a teaching on this coming up in part six or seven. But it really is tied to Joshua. The book of Joshua gives us in, insight on how to take the promises of God. We know that Moses didn't; they ended up in the wilderness. Joshua believed God; he leads them in with Caleb. But Joshua means Yeshua, or he saves. So it's a type of Christ that takes us in, or the Word of God. And understand that yeah. Joshua yeah. is a picture of Christ, but not only that, Jesus is the tree of life, and the tree of life is God's first name, yad Hey vah -Hey, or Y-O-D. So when we talk about the tithe, and then we talk about Joshua, he says, meditate on this book daily and nightly, and you will make your way prosperous. You, you will make your way prosperous and successful. In other words, meditate on the tree of life, meditate on the word of God, meditate on his promises, and we're meditate on his tithe, tithe, because it's his tithe that is going to bring you into all of the promises. Now, if you got well. that, we're going to teach it down the road yeah. further, but that's just a simple yeah. uh, layout of the book of Joshua. Yeah, the tithe, yeah, the miracles of the tithe. And so, the tree of life, so Christ Jesus. So it's our responsibility, you know that. Jesus already did it all. 
I mean, the bank account for you is overflowing with great wealth. But your responsibility is to give the tithe and to now have faith for the windows to heaven to be open, to meditate on that, to see the blessings come upon you that are too much and that it's in miracles, it's in the anointing of, of the supernatural, the blessings. And then it's your responsibility to be persistent in it. Yes, Hallelujah. Persistent. The, God, yes. the Bible says take on, on the love of God and the, the perseverance of Christ. And so we take on that perseverance, that persistence in the kingdom of God. And uh, uh, it's exciting. It's just so exciting to see the miracles, not only in our lives, but in ministering to other people, the move of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my well, gosh. I open the door. I need to at least say this, because the tree of life yeah, is, is Christ Jesus yeah. and is God's first name, Yod, but it is also the 10th letter yeah. in the Hebrew. So it is critically it's first attached. Name. So first God first. sent his first name, the tree of life, his 10th to us. And it is paying dividends to God every single time somebody receives the Lord. That's the truth. So it is very important yeah. to understand the tithe and why you meditate on it yeah. and its rewards and the promises because they're locked up in your giving. Here they are. Do you want to read the scripture? Yep. He said, well, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Upon the rock, Christ Jesus, the tithe, the tenth. Yeah. Now you're... That's you, the keys to the kingdom. But also you're saved uh, by your prayer, faith and grace, praying and receiving Christ Jesus. You have to receive you're, Jesus. You're not saved by your tithe. No. So we don't want you to... Doesn't even that. bring salvation no, into it. No, tithe It's is, a blessing here on this earth. Yeah, it's a blessing here. Your, your prayer for sal salvation is just receiving Christ. That's it. There's no Ten Commandments don't, don't get you saved. To nothing gets you saved except Jesus. Jesus is the only way. The tenth, God's. Yep. Yep, God's. Okay, now I want to read a little bit to you out of Malachi. So if you can watch this all the way through, you're going to be blessed by it. Get just your Bibles and understand. read with us. Here it says in Malachi, uh, three, looking at, three, I'm going to look at verse six first. Six. I'm the Lord okay. God, thy God. And I do not change. Can you get that through your head? God it didn't try. change from Old Testament no. to New Testament. It didn't change from Abraham before the law ever was introduced. Nope. It has never changed. He's still the same God. So please keep that in mind. Therefore, you are not uh, consumed, O oh, sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your father, you have gone away from my ordinances. Now, an ordinance is a principle of God. It's not, it's not a command. It's not something you have to do for salvation, but it is something that is connected to the promises and the good life on this earth. That's what it's connected to. And then it says, return to me and I will return to you. And said the Lord, and he, they said, well, how do we return? He said, will a man rob God? This is where oh, it becomes very goodness, interesting. Oh my goodness, it goes right into this. So, so he says robbing. Robbing. Now, you, the only thing you could rob from God is anything that was already his. In other words, it's never been yours. No. It's always been his. Yes. He gave it to you. Now he wants you to bring it to the house. Yeah. This is why we bring Christ Jesus to the house. We bring the anointed one to the house. We bring the word of became flesh to the house. We bring uh, the yod or the fir our first fruits to the house. This is God's plan that we bring it to the kingdom to build the kingdom. To build God's kingdom. That's what it's about. God, he, it takes money to build the kingdom. So, and it's his and he expects you to use it to build the kingdom. And it's actually the first place that we see uh, yes. some of what the world uses, bring it. Uh, he, he used the word bring it because he was trying to get people to at least come and hear the word. Yeah. Is that right? Absolutely. All right. So then he said, Will a man rob God as you have robbed me? But in what ways have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Oh, my goodness. There it is. They're asking him, how can I return to God? And God's saying, well, tithes and offerings. Yeah. Now, the translation here says, it's, it's just interesting. It says you are cursed with a curse. It doesn't say God cursed you. 
No. Now, when you're when you're you not, do it to yourself. What you, what you're doing? The word curse sounds horrible. I know it sounds so yeah. strong, but but it means that you're shooting yourself in the foot concerning the promises. Yeah, to, uh, to concerning the the wealth that he has for you. Yeah, He's exactly. Saying you're not receiving the blessings are locked up. They're the not flowing to you. Here's the keys to That's the kingdom. That's what it means. So it's a, yeah. What you bind on earth but, is bound in heaven. What is loosed have, on earth is loosed in heaven. But we have to understand that it's not God. God's a good God yep, all the time. He doesn't do He's it. generous. Always But good. we have free choice. We're responsible for our life. God says that you're responsible to make your way prosperous and successful. I already made it that way. So I'm responsible for the life I have. And he says, this is what you do. I mean, the first nine chapters in Joshua tell you how to live kingdom life. And right here is Deuteronomy about your giving yep. and meditating. So now look, just look at this though. This is even fun. He said, bring the tithes and offerings to the storehouse that there may be food in my house and Prove me now in this, says the Lord. In other words, this is the only place you'll find in the scriptures that he said, go ahead and give it your best shot because watch and see what I'll do. That's the truth. Test me. Go Test ahead. Me. Give it your best shot. It's That's pretty true. fascinating that he would yeah. actually yeah. say that. Yeah. Because he knows it'll work. Yeah. We just need to believe it works. <laughs> I just thought of a story. I knew somebody, okay. Um, and so they, they went, I don't believe in tithing. I'm not going to tithe. So, so anyway, they, they were younger, a teenager. When they got their car, and so they put in their sound system of their car, and it got stolen. So right then, out of the driveway, <laughs> out of the car. This person. So then the next thing they did is like, okay. It was like Nakamichi sound system at multiple. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. Thousands of dollars. Yeah, so the next thing they did is they put an alarm. They had everything on it. So now it can't be stolen. And so the, the the story is the next thing when they went to the car, yeah, it fell. The next thing they went to the car and their seats were gone. Everything was gone. They stole the sound system, the seats, everything. Is that going to work out? Yeah, it's going to work out just fine. And so the funny thing about it was that they became tithers because they realized when they broke in the second time they took the alarm and everything 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 the seats, <laughs> they took the seat seats, they took everything. The whole seat out. so then they went okay i believe in tithing because the devil keeps stealing everything and god was faithful to that teenager Ask. faithful to show them yes you got it wasn't god it was the devil but he could steal from them so he started that, tithing and never lost another thing. I know. It was funny, the story of that person. That is a funny story. Anyway, so go on. I just had to tell that story. Well, here's a lot of scripture a that thing. a lot of people don't really uh, fully understand, and I've studied a great deal from uh, the ancient Hebrew. But if you'll not, see if I will not open the windows of heaven, pour out such a, get the word, blessing that there will not be even enough room for it. Now, most people think, I guess, maybe they thought the church was going to give them multiplication. Maybe they thought they can go in their backyard and it was going to fall out of heaven. People had all kinds of strange notions about this. But actually, proper translation is, I will bring opportunities of wealth and they will pass you by, but you have free will to choose to do them or not. And so wealth and opportunities, oh my life. gosh, so many times. Yes, yeah, as we meditating on on the wealth and seeing the miracles and seeing the heavens open. And even in the nighttime when I wake up, I start meditating on what God says and everything else. Opportunity came along Boom. for us to buy a home that we just bought for almost nothing. And we're going to make a huge amount of money on it because it, it's a treasure. We got in there. It's a treasure. I don't even Only want, God I don't even do want to tell them how much. I mean, there's uh, a lot of money. Opportunity. Opportunity came. And we took it. Yes. And we've got to do work. We have to work yeah, on it. No big deal. No big deal. But anyway, that's our investment. Because our, we're building the kingdom. We're building. We're now investors in the earth. Hallelujah. To build the kingdom. As we are building the kingdom of God. Preaching the word. We've been called. God called us. Visit us and said, I've called you to cover the earth with the word of grace and truth, to go to the nations of my church. And so we're in the process of God's dream. I have, I have, I have the understanding. My, my dad, poor, and 
And I just think about the opportunity that presented itself to him one day. He had, I was probably 12 years old or so. He had sold uh, uh, 40 acres for $700 in Northern Wisconsin. <laughs> At seven hundred dollars in cash back then, that was a lot of money anyway. And uh, the same week, someone came by our house, uh, way out in the country, knocked on the door, and he was a salesman. My dad, for whatever reason, this time sat and listened to him for a while, and he was selling stock for a dollar a share. Yeah. If he had just invested the seven hundred dollars in McDonald's for a dollar a share. Imagine it would be, how it would be worth somewhere around four billion dollars today to his inheritance. Did he do it? Yeah, I never even got seven hundred dollars in inheritance. But but did your dad buy it? No, he bought nothing. I just threw the guy out. Oh, opportunity! But opportunity passed him for wealth right there. You know, God, God is there. You can choose it or not choose it. He could have put ten dollars in it. But the Holy Spirit is there to lead you in truth. So if it's a wrong investment. But you investment, have free will. If it's a wrong investment, then the Holy Spirit will put a check in your spirit. They and I it. believe him to do that. I say, Holy Spirit, don't let me go left nor right. Don't let me make a bad investment. If I'm about to, put a check in my spirit. Tell me, no, 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 this is not the way. And he promises to do that. That's right. But we have to be spirit led in it. That's right. And so, that's when back in the days when there was only White Castle hamburgers. I mean, it was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, so, but anyway. We don't, we try not to miss those opportunities. And what that's we're what trying we're to say to you is you have to pick those opportunities out and you have to make the decision. And then you are responsible for that decision. Yes. But also, there are con artists out there. Oh, and they'll. So, so, and they use all kinds of ways. If an investor is out there trying to get you to invest, you have to ask yourself, why does he need your money to invest if he's already an investor? Yeah, so, so be cautious. So, you know, yeah, so that you have to always pray and look for that, that uh, go ahead by the Spirit of God or the check in your spirit. You know, don't, don't eat everything that comes along. Either. Right. Now, this is going to be the most important for you to okay, fully grasp. Are. From what we're teaching hopefully you've been able to make it to, yeah. <laughs> through this first 15 minutes <laughs> you're still here yeah they we're going to get to this excited. point and he said i he said and the lord said i will rebuke the well, devourer wait. for your sakes now we didn't age, say yet you know, open up the windows of heaven yet. we just talked about it we talked about it but we didn't read it that's okay, okay. but okay. anyway i'll open pour up out more than I think I did read Pour it, out so much blessings that there's not room enough blessing. for it. The yeah, blessings. Too much. And its blessings are not, they're miracle blessings. They can, they have miracle anointings on them. And we have to get that. Miracle anointings on them. They're, they're supernatural in your life to do miracles. In any area of your life, need a miracle, they're there to do it. Well, they, they, have, to, they have to release the invisible to yes, become visible. Yes, yes. And you do that by your tithe. That's and then right. you see it. You have to see it open. That's you have the key. to put faith. It's you still know, the key. God's kingdom moves by faith. That's right. And our meditation. So go on, I'm sorry. Then it says, I will rebuke the devourer on your behalf, on your for your sake. So I will rebuke the devourer. The ancient Hebrew says it this way. It says that if you will bring it into the kingdom on the first day of the week, you finish your week. Yeah. In other words, that puts God in position that he has to move through your pay period all the way to the next chance you have to tithe. He has to move all the way through here and rebuke the devourer on your behalf. That's the truth. That's so powerful. That's the truth. I and mean, people that, got that. The, you do it here, you know, oh he my, finishes your week. You Come know on. what the Lord said to us? This is the truth. This is what he says. This is the time. But when we just bought our last investment, the anointing fell so heavy God said, this is it. Now, we've been meditating yeah, day and night reward. on our giving and seeing the miracles and the heavens open and the floodgates on us and all of this, okay? And God said, and I'm going to restore what the enemy has stolen. And so God restores. The so, so you, you know, when the enemy steals, you stand on your tithe because God says he will rebuke the devourer on your behalf. And so he's... So that's really? what he does. It's amazing. He's a restorer. See, you, you never have to get sad about it. Something gets stolen from you. 
you know. And, he protects, and remember have, this, he protects what you own. You know, and not uh, what you owe. One of the pastor's granddaughters drowned, and the dad said, Absolutely not. I'm a tither in the name of Jesus, and the devil cannot steal my daughter. And they they said, She's dead. There's no hope. There's nothing. And she right there woke up and said, Dad, you need to fix your pool. Yeah, because I mean, uh, the miracle. drain had held her yeah, hair, down, hair there. down. But that's a miracle of tithing. Well, I think about Donnie McGuire. He said, Years ago, he told us the story yeah. when he was here, Donnie and Reba, and, and he said... Uh, he had a heart attack. He's had a heart attack, and on the way to the hospital, he said, that's it, I'm a tither, I'm not having a heart problem. By the time we got to the hospital... He was fine. He was fine. Went home, no no damage to his heart. There's something to be said about, about it. Amen. The power of it. Yeah. The tithe. So, he went on Damn. to say here... Miracles in that tithe. This is where we, we ultimately wanted to get to in those last seven <laughs> minutes. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall your vine fail to bear fruit in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all of the nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land or family. Wow. Oh, my, my gosh. Now, just goodness. think, just think what it said here. The, wow. People have missed this for years. And as I wrote the book, God gave me a revelation of this. That tells you that they had been planting in the earth dirt to grow trees that produced fruit, to grow grain that was going to produce grain, that one seed would produce a hundred on one stalk. But pestilence had been consistently destroying everything they planted. And he said, look, if you do this, I will multiply what you plant in the earth. That's right. And how critical is that for us to think about? Most people are a little afraid of this teaching because it was going to take money out of the church. No, no, both work. You have to plant here in order to get this to multiply. Amen. You have to plant here to get this to multiply. You didn't, minute, you didn't get it yet. You have to plant in the kingdom to get the earth to multiply. And you plant in the earth. You That's have it. to plant in the earth. You can't just plant in the kingdom either. God wants, he multiplies what you plant in the earth. Well, what does a farmer do? you give to the kingdom. And what does so, a farmer do? He has to plant a seed in the dirt. My grandfather had to do that. He had to plant seed in the dirt. And then it had to be watered, prayed over, and pray for the right weather. And, da -da -da. Yeah. and it would produce grain. And on top of the grain would be the yeah. fruit. And then the reason that the Bible teaches first fruit, a lot of people don't even know this. Okay, I'm, that's I'm throwing this in. My granddad, when it came time for the season, and we'd go out and see the just golden grain of oats, just he, it was fantastic. We would walk carefully through the field, not to destroy Amen. much, but he would take a seed and he would taste the seed. I never quite got it, but I tasted them with him, but I couldn't tell the difference. He'd taste the seed and then he'd move around or go through different spots of the field, and then he'd say, right here, right, okay, this is the seed we see, keep for next year. Yeah. And I said, well, why? He said, because that's the strongest seed. Yeah, that's your, that's your, your first fruit. That's what will produce the most harvest the next year. That's why God said, sow your first seed here. Yes. Because it'll produce the most here. What we found when... You can pretty give your second, but you get second. Yeah, but we found that our tithe, the first thing we take out, because we do the checking account, that's what we do. Okay, We're still we back it. there in the ancient times. No, but that's all right, because we want to pray over it and hold it in our hand, our giving. And so, but anyway, pray over or it. mail it out to the ministries, the ministries that we mail to, finance. because yep. we're building the kingdom. So we give to build the kingdom. And so, but it, it's really interesting. That's the first thing we do. That's our first fruit. The first it comes right off the top when it's we. The first thing we do is our, because it is the strongest. Tide. It's your strongest seed to plant. Yeah. And you know when we first started, you were working in the ministry, and you were making, like I said, three thousand a year building that Christian school that's still going today. It's still blessed of Good. God and touching lives. But but uh, we didn't have enough to pay our bills at all. And, uh, uh, but you would, uh, that would be the first thing we'd give. And then all our bills would get paid and there would be money left over and you'd get super, we got supernaturally got a car. 
We didn't have a car. He had to work to work because we didn't make enough money. And, Absolutely. And we had no debt, but it was fun. It was interesting how God gave us a car. Yeah, I mean, he did. He got yeah. us a car. He got us a car. Yeah, beautiful car, too. Should I tell him? You could tell him. The neighbor you. gave us a car that that couldn't run at all. The dog slept in the it. The dog slept in it. And it was a, it was a, what was it? A Mustang. Mustang. Yes. And then 65, your dry, 65 you're, Mustang. You're walking to, to your job, to the school. It was a built. house next door, so I just pushed it over to our yard. Yeah, that's what he did because he felt bad. But, and because the dog had been living in it, I tore the entire interior out. Yeah, and then he's walking to his job. You're walking, walking there job. at the church that he'd built, the Christian school, and there was a car across Just the in street. an accident parked in a driveway. So I and stopped and knocked, and he said, well, it's not my car. Guy had an accident here. He lives down in Jol Blo uh, down yeah, Beloit or something. And he said, uh, he's supposed <laughs> to come and get it, and he hasn't. I said, do you have his phone number? He said, yeah. So I called him up on the phone. And I said, do you want to get rid of your car? It was a 65 Mustang with a dented front end. And I went, he said, yeah, I'd, yeah, get, yeah, I'd sell it. I said, how much you want? He said, well, like it is, maybe 200 bucks. I said, I'll send you 200 bucks, send me the title. So I pushed that one back home to my house and I tore the engine out, put the engine back in the old car, the white car that he gave me, the, from yeah, the dog, took the whole interior out, put the interior in the white car. Yeah, we had a beautiful new car. Beautiful running car. <laughs> it was absolutely Opportunity. Awesome. Opportunity. Opportunity came. The wealth of the wicked was laid up for the just. And when I say wicked, that's not a good word. It's the the, op, the wealth of the world is laid up for the just. That's yeah, much better yeah, translation. Yeah. Don't call them wicked. They were good people. They're really good people. And 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 but nonetheless, they we ended it. up with a fantastic car that I sold for twelve hundred bucks down the road. Yeah. And we're on our way to much better cars. Yeah. Anyway, want to give it you just we're out of time again. Oh, did we actually we got it? Planting in the earth, planting in the kingdom, but you got to become wise and he listen to the Holy Spirit before you ever invest. That's the truth. Don't do it on your own intellect oh, or never. sounds good or whatever. You better get away and if it pray sounds too good to be true, it God. is absolutely too good to be true. Yeah, too many get get conned into bad situations. So you yeah. gotta seek God. You gotta pray. Be and led even by the, sometimes talk be led to by the Holy people Spirit. and be led yeah. by the Holy Ghost. So if you don't know Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity to yeah, receive amen. him right now. So just pray this prayer with me. This is the beginning of your way amen. to prosperity. If you've never received Christ, this is your beginning. It's not about religion. Forget about religion. Just think about the truth of the Word of God and He'll lead you and direct you. Amen. So just repeat after me. Dear Father God. Dear Father God. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I ask you to forgive me of all and my sin. And I ask sins. you, dear Jesus. I ask you, dear Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, please call in. Let us know. we just love to know and hear from you. And don't forget, you have the opportunity to pick up the book. You can go to Shopify. You can go to a number of different places and uh, go to word, The Word for Winners. It's all on the bottom. We'll see you next time.